Hey, a friend, Chris here from MyLogicProRules.com, the website that helps you get the most you can out of Apple's Logic Pro. In today's video, I want to show you how to use Smart Tempo to beat map the project tempo of your Logic Pro projects to match that of your audio performances. In this case, an electric rhythm guitar. So beat by beat, bar by bar, we're going to have the project tempo beat map to this electric guitar performance so that when we bring in drummer, Apple loops, even other audio files, all of these things will conform effortlessly to that varying tempo over time. This video is basically part two to last week's video where we took the same project, but instead of having everything conform to the varying tempo of an audio performance, I instead use flex time to then conform the performance to a consistent tempo of 111 beats per minute. So two sides to the same tempo coin in Logic Pro. So let me show you how to use Smart Tempo to do all this effortlessly. Let's dig in. All right, once again, the project that is in front of us today has been supplied by reader and subscriber, Jim. Jim and I had a conversation a couple of weeks ago. He was having a hard time getting drummer or Apple loops or third-party drum plugins and patterns to play along with his guitar performances. His project tempo is set to that of 108 beats per minute. However, as we learned in last week's video, these guitar performances don't happen to follow a consistent tempo. So last week we used flex time to flex the rhythm guitar performance to one consistent tempo. Today we're going to use smart tempo to instead conform the project tempo to that of the varying tempo of our guitar. So once again, just to illustrate this varying tempo over time, I'm just going to press play with the metronome so you can take a listen. So every time the guitar comes in at the very beginning, it should land with each bar. And we start out fairly close, but over time, the guitar starts a little further ahead of each bar, right? And if we bring in drummer, we can really hear the difference. Right, so as we explore, drummer is not going to be able to keep up with the guitarist, even if we use the follow function right down here in the drummer editor, because drummer does rely on the project tempo and grid for cues for what it should do at specific critical moments, such as major bars and beats. So for now, I'm going to turn off the follow function right down here. I'll close the editor. And first things first, we're going to select our rhythm guitar region. And we're going to open the editor by using key command E or by double clicking on the region, or by clicking on the scissor icon in the upper left-hand corner of the control bar. I'll expand the view of the editor by clicking and dragging on the boundary. And next, we're going to click on the Smart Tempo tab in the editor. Now, immediately, we can see this guitar performance laid out across the Smart Tempo editor. If we zoom in, we see these bolded gray lines that let us know the downbeat that has been analyzed across this performance. And the lighter gray lines are for each beat in between the downbeats. In this case, in a 4-4 time signature. Now, if you don't see this view in the Smart Tempo Editor, for example, if I remove all tempo information from this Analyze region by right-clicking or control and clicking on the region itself, going to Tempo and Remove Tempo Information, the editor has been closed. Let's use Key Command E to open it. Click on the Smart Tempo Editor tab once again. Now Logic will have to analyze the region first for all tempo, downbeat, and time signature information. So let's click Analyze. All right, so if we drag the playhead in the Smart Tempo Editor across this region, we can see in the Tempo section right here in the Smart Tempo Editor that Logic has analyzed a varying tempo over time. It hovers between 106 beats per minute, 115, you know, so on and so forth. And we can even take a listen to this varying tempo over time just by enabling this metronome button right here, pressing the playback button, and then blending between playback of the audio file and the metronome. And of course, we're listening to the raw audio 
because this guitar, if we select the track lane, is being processed using guitar rig from native instruments. But we hear only the clean DI signal within the smart tempo editor. Okay, so we know that this guitar changes its tempo over time. Unfortunately, the project tempo at the moment is set to a consistent tempo of 108 beats per minute. So in this case, we have a tempo discrepancy. To apply this varying tempo over time to the project tempo global track lane, all we need to do is go right to the edit menu right within the smart tempo editor and go down to apply region tempo to the project tempo. We get a pop-up that says this function applies the tempo of the selected region to the project tempo, and it can also align the region to the downbeat. We have two options we can enable or disable, including align downbeat to nearest project downbeat and maintain relative positions of all other regions. This will ensure that all of our regions will maintain the relative position. So when we press play with this new project tempo that's been applied, all our regions play back in time as expected. And let's click apply. All right, so if we take a look, we can see that our tempo is varying over time across the entire performance. We can see bar by bar. In some cases, these different tempos are applied to multiple bars at a time. Let's take a listen to the metronome alongside the guitar to see how close we've come. Okay, so the metronome more or less sounds in time with the guitar, but what has been applied here with Smart Tempo is an averaging of tempo across the performance. That's why we're seeing between bars four and six and six and eight and eight and 10, that some of these tempo variations have been grouped together. Now this may be perfectly usable for your particular project, but I found more times than not that most folks, myself included, prefer a more nuanced beat mapping that includes both bars and beats. So let's apply a quick change using the smart tempo settings. If you click directly beneath the beats per minute in the LCD, right on keep here, we get three different options to either keep tempo, adapt tempo, or use auto mode for smart tempo. But right at the bottom, we have this option for smart tempo project settings. And about three quarters of the way down, we have this option for export tempo resolution. And as you can see, this is currently set to smooth or average the tempo beat mapping. By clicking on this drop down menu, we can change this from smooth to beats. And let's close it up. Now, if we go back to the Smart Tempo Editor and click on Edit, and once again, apply the region tempo to the project tempo, let's click Apply. All right, we have a much more nuanced version of this beat map. Let's take a listen and a look. All right, so that has been applied across the entire performance. For every bar, for every beat, nothing has been grouped together in an average sort of fashion. At which point, if we reintroduce drummer and take a listen, This is perfect when you're working with a project that was not recorded to a consistent tempo, but you need a tempo map of some sort so you can make edits, so you can apply drummer or Apple loops or anything else to the project and have everything line up accordingly. As another example, let's open the Apple loops browser and I'm going to bring in a drum Apple loop. In this case, the acoustic layers B. And I'm gonna drag it right into the project, have it line up with bar nine. Let's bring this right up so we can see what's going on. So remember, the acoustic layers beat is set to a BPM of 85. And if we take a listen and a look. And the Apple loop just matches up with the guitar performance beat by beat. It really can be that effortless. Now, lastly, I wanna show you how to import audio files that are not drummer, that are not Apple loops 
and still have these audio files match the varying tempo of your beat map. Let's zoom out. Let's just get rid of drummer and the acoustic layer beat. And let's navigate to the finder. And right here, I have a couple of drum loops at a tempo of 162 beats per minute. All right, so I think the full hats would be a great addition to this project. At the moment, if I select the full hats and drag it right into the project and make sure that it lines up with bar one of our guitar, let's take a listen and a look to what's going on. Okay, clearly this drum performance is not lining up to the project tempo. To fix this, let's go right back up to the tempo section of the LCD, click right below the beats per minute, and click on Smart Tempo Project Settings. In this second section here, we have defaults for flex and follow of region settings. And we could set imported files to either just be turned on in terms of flex and follow, turn on and align the bars of the region when imported, or turn on and align both bars and beats so I'm going to select that. I'll go back to the finder and then import this drum loop once again into the project and let go. So we get a pop-up that tells us that we can edit the downbeat and tempo for this audio file using the Smart Tempo Editor. I'm just gonna not show for now. And look at that. This is the same exact audio region that we dragged in the first time but flex and follow has been enabled. We take a look in the region inspector and as can be seen in the drop down right here, it's been enabled. So if we take a listen now, the tempo of this audio file was originally 162 beats per minute. And if we listen, perfect. And we can do the same exact thing with the original region that we dragged in, we select, go to the region inspector and select under flex and follow on and align bars and beats. Uh-oh, we got an issue here in terms of the timing. All we saw was some flexing occur. So if we open the Smart Tempo Editor and analyze, get this in a view so we can see what's going on. All right, now that the Smart Tempo analysis has been complete, we can go to edit. We can go down to apply project tempo to the region and downbeat. And there we have it. Pretty freaking fantastic if you ask me. And if you need to do any sort of flex editing of your audio regions, for example, we could use polyphonic. You can then flex edit these regions to the updated project tempo. So I hope you can see how versatile tempo is in Logic Pro, whether you want to edit your audio regions to a consistent tempo or use smart tempo to create a beat map from a piece of audio and then have everything else line up to that varying tempo. Thanks so much. And I'll see you for more next week here on Wide Logic Pro Rules. Take care.